All right, welcome back, amigos. If you don't know this guy by now, this is our friend Sean, also Sean from old school. Uh, in an earlier video, we did some suspension install on his bike, but today we're out here at a car show and perfect backdrop to talk about his bike as a little featured bike. We said we'd see more of it on the channel, so we got Sean's, what, 2020 Lowrider S? 2020 Lowrider S, yeah. So, guys, we'll give you guys a tour and all the stuff he's done to it, and we'll let him talk about his bike a bit. And uh, got any questions, let us know, and... Uh, all right, we're out here. Yeah, so it's a 2020 Lowrider S. This is on the new Softail platform after they obviously discontinued the Dyna Lowrider S. Um, the first ride I ever took on this bike is what sold it for me. I mean, the changes they made to the soft tail platform, how it made this bike feel so much more light, nimble, more responsive, um, is what sold it for me. As well as, as you can see, I got a lot done to this bike. Um, the platform of being able to kind of change it into everything I wanted it to be. Um, just it's, this has been my favorite bike I've ever owned. I've had quite a few before this one, sport bikes, other Harleys. This is definitely my favorite one. So, um, I kind of started with. The, I mean, I guess bars is the first thing everybody changes. Um, I love the look of a one-piece T-bar setup. So uh, these are made by LA Choppers. They're a 10-inch rise cage fighter bar, inch and a quarter. Uh, I did polyurethane bushings. Get a little bit of vibration from it, but really no flex or anything. So I love the setup, perfect height. Um, I did uh, Lucky Speed Shop shorty levers which is kind of something I figured out from having a sport bike, Ducati, prior to this one, that I really liked the two finger clutch and brake. Once I figured out that they made them for Harleys, I had to have them. Um, this is a Dominion Collection mirrors from Harley Davidson, kind of sleek, low profile. Um, this quarter fairing is Harley's quarter fairing. You can buy at any Harley dealership. Um, I don't know the part number offhand, but uh, this is just their standard new style Harley Davidson quarter fairing. I did change the windshield though. There is one company that makes a taller windscreen for this. It comes with a, about a nine inch, I think. It's almost flush with the fairing itself. This one's made by uh, Denton Performance Design. Uh, that's a 12 inch height. He does everything from a nine inch all the way up to a 16. So if you've got a quarter fairing and you're looking for a, a taller windscreen for it, Denton Performance Design. Awesome customer service, phenomenal product. Easy to talk to. I've literally talked to the guy on the phone before, the owner of the company. Awesome guy. Um, in that, I did a Moon's MC Fly Eye headlight, and in order to do that on these bikes, you do have to change the bucket and the trim ring and all that. Factory headlight has just the heat sink on the back of it. Uh, you don't get a headlight bucket or anything, so it's a Moon's MC bracket on the force brace across there, their black headlight bucket and trim ring. Uh, easy bolt-on, was super simple to do and fits perfect. Um, I also did the Bunk King crash guard. On the, on the engine guard, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people don't like to really call it a crash guard. But, yeah, we try not to crash. Um, so the Bunk King engine guard, uh, I liked it because it doubles as kind of highway pegs for me too. So uh, it's been awesome for that. I put a little bit of skateboard grip tape on it right here just so my foot doesn't slip. Uh, the end caps on there are made by Original Garage Moto. They're a company out of Canada. They make some pretty cool stuff too. I also have the uh, original Garage Moto clamps, bar clamps on my uh, on my bars that match same color. Um, we've also got the S and S. Uh, that's their Air Stinger teardrop air cleaner. I uh, like kind of the retro look to it, but having the Air Stinger center spot in it really kind of opens it up to bring a lot more air into. Um, another neat little piece I did down here, you can kind of barely see is made by Green Brothers Designs. This is their brake bone. So a lot of the, probably the biggest complaint on this bike from anybody would be the lack of rear brake performance. A lot of it has to do with the leverage that you can't get on the factory one. You feel like you have to point your toe down at the ground in order to get good leverage. Green Brothers makes a bunch of different color brake bones and they offer a huge adjustment on there to where you can bring that pedal way up and get a lot more leverage on it. So that was a huge install too, or a, a huge upgrade too, as far as just riding the bike and getting better performance out of it. Um, I did the thrashing militant pegs, front and rear. I actually went through probably, geez, probably six different sets of pegs, just 
combination of being indecisive and trying out some different stuff. I even tried a set of mini floorboards on there, but for the type of riding I like to do and the fact that I'm still kind of doing some hooligan shit, it doesn't really let you roll your foot forward at all if you got mini floorboards, so those went pretty quick. So far, I love the thrashing pegs. They're lightweight, they give you all the ground clearance, and uh, they're not too aggressive to where you can't move your foot around at all, but they keep your foot planted. Um, the exhaust I did is, uh, that's their newer style Bassani Ripper. I did in stainless. Uh, I chose not to run the heat shields on there because uh, I like the open welds and you can actually see the nice golden color. So sounds awesome, not too loud or raspy, but definitely got a real good bark to it. Um, I, I am running a, a Harley uh, Screaming Eagle Street Pro tuner right now. I do intend on very soon actually doing a full cam chest setup. Um, I'm gonna run a Power Vision, but for the time being, I'm just running the Harley Street tuner. That'll be a big difference. Yeah, huge difference in power. I mean, in, in order to get real power out of these M8 motors, you really need to do something beyond a Harley cam. Uh, I'm well, actually thinking well, of doing. Well, well, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm actually thinking of doing uh, Wood Performance. They have a new cam out. They're making the WM8, the 22X cams. And they've got a couple different versions now, but I just recently found they do a 22XD. They call it their Hooligan cam. Supposedly, it's the highest lift, most aggressive lope you can get using a stock valve train. So that Pretty paired cool. with a Power Vision tuner, we're looking to get somewhere between 125, 130 horse about 140 foot-pounds of torque, so that should wake her up quite a bit. She's That's sitting so about sick. 95 wheel horse right now, so that should wake it up quite a bit. Still not too bad. Yeah, right? Um, something, a little small part that I did on here that I really didn't expect to see any kind of change out of, but was surprised by, was the fueling vented oil dipstick. Uh, I did it because, of, you know, obviously a lot of people talk about having some sort of a vent in the crankcase of these M8 engines is, is just beneficial in itself. One of the things I noticed, I was real surprised by, once I did that, these bikes inherently have, everybody calls it rev hang. You're sitting still idling and you just give it a quick rev, it kind of wants to hang on the RPMs before it comes back down. When I did that vented oil dipstick, it got rid of that completely. So it's a lot snappier throttle response, no more rev hang. Doesn't seem to be obviously any kind of a performance gain, but that alone made the bike feel like it rode differently. So having a snappier throttle response and no rev hang just it made it sound better to me anyways more fun to ride um, this is also probably the fifth seat that i've run on this bike ultimately this is a seat i wanted the entire time uh, this is a lucky dave seat for the 2018 and up uh, soft tail low riders that's their custom gold stitching and i ultimately wanted this one right from the get-go but they're almost impossible to get a hold of they're always sold out you got to get on a wait list so while i was waiting for the one that i had on order which ended up being about seven and a half months uh, i rode a saddleman step up i rode a lapera kick flip um, actually had a couple different saddleman step ups and i although i did like them this is hands down my favorite seat i've had i, I wouldn't go back to any of the other ones i had um, you get kind of a combination of a saddleman step up and uh that's like the saddleman san diego customs so you get the rounded it's not like a full step up, you get a little bit of rounded support. It's a little bit softer than a step up, and I feel like the gel core in this one is just more comfortable overall. I mean, I rode this all the way to Lake George, New York and back, had my fiance on the back, and she was actually eight months pregnant at the time. No complaints on either one of us, so comfortable ride. Highly recommend the Lucky Dave seat if you're looking for a seat that looks hot on the bike, it's comfortable, you just gotta wait for it, that's all. Hi. Why haven't you subscribed to our channel yet? All right, so I'd say next big thing I did that was a huge upgrade for me, I got sick of carrying a backpack. Loved the bike, loved the options for saddlebags for this, and I like the looks of these the best. These are the Leather Pros. Um, I got a killer deal on them, because they were these are the V2. They make a V3 now that has a little bit better uh, quick disconnect that mounts on the strut, but I've had absolutely no issues with this. Uh, this is their Easy Mount saddlebag. So what that means is instead of them being a little bit longer following the fender, they have a cutout in the back here for your turn signal. So it doesn't require you to relocate your factory turn signals. Um, there's tons of space in these things. They expand to double what they are here. They have a zipper in the center. You zip it all the way around. When we went to Lake George, I used one, my fiance used the other, and we had these things packed to the gills out to here. Didn't feel any difference on the bike. 
Uh, it handled everything on the struts fine, and the quick detach is awesome. There's a little key slot, so they are lo they can lock on your bike, so you don't have to worry about people stealing them. You just turn the key slot on the inside, flip the lever, and you just lift up like a like luggage and just pull it right off the bike. So quick on, quick off. So if I don't want to run them, I can just pop them right off. But they give me a ton of space, not have to carry a backpack anymore. It's just obviously having tour bike comforts like these guys do without actually having to have a tour bike. Um, I also changed the tail light on this bike. The factory tail light's a smoked, basically a CVO style tail light. I just wanted something a little bit more profile. So this is made by Custom Dynamics. Um, this is not their um, Pro Series light. This is just kind of one of their other series. I loved it because it's a little different than what everybody else has got. It's got a black housing. It's actually a clear lens. Um, but with that full black housing, it just makes the whole light look dark. It's super bright. This one does not have turn signals integrated because I have my factory turn signals, but you can get the same tail light with signals integrated into it as well. Um, this license plate bracket is made by Kiriakin. It's, I mean, there's a couple of them on the market as far as lay down, but I like that this one curved to the fender. Um, not too much money either. You can pick one up for like 80, 90 bucks. So that was also one of the first things I think I did to it because the big billboard license plate holder on these things is terrible. Uh, turn signals that I'm running, both front and rear, are made by Rogue Rider Industries. Uh, again, I like them because they have a black background to them. So they're not a silver circuit board that shows through. Uh, and they have their own turn signal lenses too that are a little different than what you can get from Harley. They're darker. Because their lights are so bright, you can run that darker lens and still get full vision out of them. So those are pretty awesome too, Rogue Rider Industries. This is just a standard quick detach uh, Harley Davidson Sissy Bar. This is their their low height. They do have one taller than this, uh, but it's quick detach, just literally two things and it pulls up straight off, pops right on. So another thing that's nice to be able to just pop on and off. I love the quick detach stuff. Um, some little smaller things, little details I've done here and there. Uh, a company called IMZZ Elite, which people have kind of mixed reviews about. I had to wait a long time to get some stuff from them, but they're one of the only places you can get these ARP replacement bolts from. Um, I did them in a multitude of different spots on the bike. You can get them with those washers that are beneath them there in that yellow color. My seat bolt is also IMZZ Elite. Uh, all these strut bolts on the side, the oil bag bolts, all replaced with black bolts. Little small stuff like that. I always liked what a difference it makes when it all comes together. Um, I've also got a custom primary cover. It was done by Casters Customs at our very own Old School Harley Davidson. Uh, that's just a Willie G Harley Davidson primary cover, but it comes in a satin black. I wanted it a little different than everybody else's, so Aaron painted up for me, painted my uh, derby cover on the other side to match the, the inspection cover, and uh, those came out super nice, matched the bike really well. I did the bronze to match the wheels, so that looks awesome. Shift linkage that I'm running, uh, same company that I got the brake bone from. That's Green Brothers Designs. They got a couple different designs you can get. You can get billet aluminum. Uh, that one's a carbon fiber, and then it has the additional end caps you can put on there in different colors. I obviously ran the yellow to match the other stuff. Um, awesome though, their whole logo is to stiffen your shift, and it does just that. Just a more positive shift, uh, adjustability, and to get rid of that super ugly, just steel bar that's in there. It looks like nothing. Uh, they give you the ARP bolts with it. So super good deal. Those guys are great too. Um, veteran owned company, super easy to talk to. Uh, right now I'm running the Crossthread Cycles shifter peg, which I intend on getting their brake arm and matching uh, brake pedal. They've just been out of stock for a couple of months, so I haven't been able to get my hands on one, but that'll be a next upgrade that goes on here. Um, what else do we got? Uh, I did flush mount gas caps. I think that's a huge addition too that's kind of underrated. That's just a Harley Davidson part, obviously just a dummy cap on one side, but um, flush mount gas caps, clean up the whole tank area. Uh, these trim rings in the center here are the Dominion collection or Defiance collection from Harley Davidson. They just kind of stick on there, but also get rid of the ugly chrome bezels that don't make any sense on a bike that's all blacked out. Uh, I'm running a thrash and bar bag. Uh, another nice little storage spot that's just out of the way, doesn't take up any extra space. Gives me a spot to put glasses, a couple of tools, registration, that kind of stuff. Right behind it, you see the Kiriakin Road Thunder, the MTX audio speaker. Um, I strategically chose that with something that could fit inside of this quarter fairing. 
and have been, I didn't expect a lot out of it, but I've been thoroughly impressed with it. It's super loud, full face helmet on, 70 miles an hour, I can still hear it clearly. So not gonna get a ton of bass out of it, but it's nice to have tunes on a bike that doesn't normally have a stereo. So that's been awesome to have too. Um, suspension upgrades, as Devin mentioned before, we a previous video we had changed my rear suspension in order to match my front suspension. I do have the Legend front cartridges in here. They're Axio cartridges for inverted forks. I was so impressed with the performance I got out of the front ones. Originally when I did my rear suspension, they didn't have a mono shock yet. They didn't make anything yet. So I went with Fox Racing. Was very impressed with the Fox other than a little stiffer than I wanted it to be, even with adjusting compression, rebound, preload. It was still a little stiff and I wanted a little more height out of it. Well, Legend uh, this year finally released their uh, mono shock for soft tail. So I've upgraded that to 13 inch. So it sits a little bit taller, about an inch taller than the stock setup. And I've been thoroughly impressed with it. Um, I've got a few hundred miles, probably 500 miles on that suspension now. And Matt front and rears match perfectly. This thing rides like a sport bike. And like I said, at the beginning of the video, this is my favorite bike I've ever owned. I do plan on getting probably a road glide uh, somewhere down the road to have a tour bike, but don't think I'll ever get rid of this bike. This has absolutely been my favorite bike to ride. It's super sporty, but it's also comfortable. It's smooth with the M8 on there. It's the smoothest engine they've ever made. So I've got plenty of power. I've got plenty of upgrades left I want to do to it. So stay tuned to the channel. I'm sure these guys will be happy to go over it again with some of the other upgrades they do in the future. See you soon.